I just rolled one of my worst chunks imaginable. Entrana, giving me access to my first furnace, and along it comes, huge implications. Hi, my name is Foley, and welcome back to the Semi Extreme One Chunk series. If you enjoyed the videos, make sure to like and subscribe. It's free and it helps the channel out a lot. Also, shout out to my channel members listed here on screen who got to watch this video a few days early. Thank you for the continued support you give me. I also stream on Twitch every weekday, so feel free to come by and hang out. I'm going to be hosting a subathon on November 1st with a load of forfeits and bonds to give away, so I would love to see you there. But anyways, let's get to the video. I hope you all enjoy, and thank you for watching. Having the smithing cape unlocked alongside a mine, furnace, and anvil, this means 99 smithing is an inevitability. But for now, it's on the backlog. If you want to know the full reasoning behind it, please refer to the end of the last video. But to sum it up, smithing will be backlogged until I gain access to a bank or mine that doesn't cost GP to get to the furnace and back. Examples being from the Entrana furnace to either the Remington mine or the pest control bank. My only way back and forth from the furnace to a bank or mine at the moment is through charter ships that cost GP each and every time I use them. So until then, the backlog you go. And on top of that being backlogged, I had to backlog obtaining three new best in slot items. The Rune Fool Helm, Adamant Plate Legs, and Mithril Kite Shield from Greater Demons in the Entrana Dungeon. This is because the entrance is only one way and can't be used as an exit. And since I don't have a teleport that can bring me back into my current chunks, the dungeon is off limits until I have a way back. But you know what you shouldn't be backlogging? Your education. And that is why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. Not to mention they are radically affordable with their online tuition rates being some of the lowest in the nation. They've even been voted one of the country's most innovative universities by US News and World Report. If you're interested in learning about game development, then this is the perfect place to start. You can learn computer programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java while getting hands-on experience with Unreal Engine even with no knowledge prior. The best part is that courses are led by instructors with hands-on industry experience who will guide you in researching, developing, and making meaningful contributions to the latest trends and innovations in game program. Go to snhu.edu slash Also linked in my description to see what the current average annual salary for a game developer is and request free information about the program. When you request information, a dedicated advisor will reach out to discuss how the program can be tailored to meet your personal goals. Huge thank you to SNHU for sponsoring this video. It really does mean the most. Don't forget to go to snhu.edu slash Foley for more information. Just one click is all it takes to discover your true passion. Now back to the video. Entrana gave me three tasks that I'll show here on screen. With the biggest being getting level 87 to make a Dorgish and Light Orb. With access to buckets of sand and soda ash, I am able to use them with a furnace to make molten glass. Making a molten glass grants 20 XP and then I am able to use said molten glass with the glass blowing pipe to make a number of items given anywhere from 17 and a half XP for a beer glass all the way up to 70 XP for a Dorgish and Light Orb. This is going to take a while so let's go ahead and get started and make some progress. As you can see my cash stack is pretty low right now so for now I'm just going to work on the 6 65 fletching for a little bit, make some willow longbows, and I'll go and sell them to the general store to be able to get some funds to start on this crafting journey. 47 wood cutting, 48 fletching, 48 wood cutting. What's going on here? Hey, Gene. I appreciate the bond. Thank you very much. It will go much in handy. You're looking, you're looking mad rad. That is the gear to be having. I appreciate it. 49 wood cutting. 49 fletching and there is a 50 wood cutting forgot to record it but i completed the easy falador task of traveling to entrana it's a pretty free task because i'm gonna be doing that a whole bunch while i'm doing uh, this crafting grind Ideally, I shouldn't need a lot of money to get to 87 crafting as you pretty much break even on supply costs if you sell back the glass you make to the charter ship. But other than that, there are two things I need GP for at the moment. I have about 60,000 iron arrow tips in the bank from the iron bar world hopping I did in a previous episode that I would like to make into arrows. And to do that, I need to buy feathers. At 200 GP per 100 feathers, the cost of them can add up fairly quick. The other thing I need GP for is my trips back and forth from Varlamore to Port Serum. 
While training my crafting, I'm going to have to world hop after each trip to be able to fill up my inventory with sand and ash again. The downside of this is that I need to be logged in for at least 5 minutes for a random event to spawn and I don't want to miss out on possible XP lamps. So every time I'm eligible for a random event, I'll put a hold on crafting until I get one. If I stayed at Port Serum waiting for the event, there really isn't much I can do because I won't have my axe to cut trees. This is because you aren't allowed to go to Entrana with any gear or weapons that have a offensive or or defensive stat in which an axe possesses. So the options are stand around at Port Serum and wait or go back to Varlamore and do something productive until the random event spawns. I'm on team do something productive but this also means that every random event is going to cost me 6200 GP in charter ship cost going back and forth between waiting for randoms and training crafting. My goal for XP lamps for this chunk is to hit 16 hunter which is one level away from unlocking Piro Piro and 6 agility, which will give me my first run energy restoration upgrade. After I hit those two lamping goals, I'll forego all future random events to focus solely on crafting because if I didn't, the amount of time to complete this chunk would basically be doubled and a few more XP lamps really doesn't seem to be worth it to me. 50 fletching, 51 woodcutting, 52 woodcutting, 51 fletching, and there's 53 woodcutting. We just got a freaky forester event and it looks like we got ourselves an XP lamp that I'm going to put straight into hunter and there is a level 9 hunter. Level 52 fletching, 54 woodcutting, 55 woodcutting, 56 woodcutting, 57 woodcutting, 53 fletching, and 58 woodcutting. I got myself 1700 willow logs fletched and ready to sell. I also got myself enough arrow shafts for the iron arrow tips that I have. I just need to buy the feathers now. Before I go sell the longbows, I'm going to do some world hopping for these eclipse wine spawns here in the hunter's guild. I found out at the end of the last episode that these sell to the general store for 400 GP, so, so selling these one at a time in tandem with the 5 longbows is going to yield me 640 GP per world hop. So I'll see you all when I'm done collecting these wines. Alright, I got myself 381 Eclipse wines, so the plan is to sell 1 wine and 5 longbows to the general store, world hop, and repeat the process. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Oh my god, I just seen it, but look. We have our first cash stack over 100,000 and we still have a whole bunch of supplies to sell. So I am I'm actually so excited to see what I'll end up with. Oh, feels great to have these wines. I wish I would have known about them sooner. Another world hop limit has been reached. I wasn't able to sell all of them. I still have like over 200 wines to sell, but we do have that 100k cash stack and I'm going to actually spend some of that money right now on feathers and keep a little bit of money for crafting tomorrow. It's getting pretty late, so I'm planning on waking up in the morning, doing a little bit more world hop selling to this general store and then starting on the crafting journey. But for now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy them feathers and I think I'm going to spend the rest of my night mining while I wait for a random event. Only spent about 40,000 GP on feathers for now, but that got me about 20,000. This should be good enough for now. I'm still going to go need to buy a uh, some more feathers in the future. Now I've chosen mining to be the activity that I do while waiting for random events, just because 99 smithing is an inevitability at this point. So I might as well get a little bit of a head start on the ore that I am going to need for that. At best, I'm going to need like 300,000 iron ore and at worst upwards of almost 700,000. So, with what little dent I will be putting into that while waiting for random events is still going to save me time in the future. So might as well get as much as I can now because really here on Varlamore there's not really much I can do that can work towards a chunk task anyway so might as well work towards a future one. And while I'm rambling, I might as well mention this. Since the start of the account, I have been considering giving myself a free chunk roll whenever I get a skilling pet that wouldn't be a chunk task otherwise, like the rock golem, beaver, and the heroine. This wouldn't take away any current task I have, but could potentially spice things up in the case that I do get one. I did put out a poll asking viewers how they felt about this, and it was about a 50-50 split decision. At the end of the day, it's my decision, and I just wanted to see how people felt about it. So if you haven't already, go ahead and find that poll in my community post. I'll have it linked in the description as well. I'll have my final decision on it next episode and let you all know then. 
and it is a morning time. I went ahead and sold a few more wines and bows, but I still have quite a bit in the bank that I can sell. Gonna start this crafting journey off with about 100k cash stack, which should do me well for a while. But pretty much I got my glass blowing pipe here. I just go to the charter ship shop and I can buy myself 10 buckets of sand and then 10 buckets of soda ash. And then I will hop worlds and I will buy three more buckets of sand and three more soda ash which will give me a full inventory. And then I just make my way over to Entrana. And once I get to Entrana, I can go to the furnace and make all these into molten glass. And that is level two crafting already. And once we make all the molten glass, we can just make our way back to Port Serum. And once I get back to Port Serum, I'm just gonna go ahead and deposit all the buckets uh, just for the sake of collecting buckets i could sell them back to the store for a little bit more money but um i want the collection and on our walk back to the charter ship shop we will go ahead and just glass blow and there is a level five crafting already and once we get there we will sell all the things that we have blown and then just rinse and repeat. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Making a pit stop here at the bank to cut these gems that I have sitting in my bank. Now that I'm level 29, I should be able to cut these sapphires and emeralds to be able to get the level to cut rubies and uh, this will skip a couple levels and actually give me a new glass to blow which will then in turn give me more experience per molten glass that i make and blow so but there is level 30 crafting level 31 crafting level 32 crafting and there is level 33 crafting and 34 crafting i can now cut rubies there is level 35 crafting just before i am done cutting all my rubies but yeah if we look here at level 33 crafting i am able to make vials which will give me a little bit more xp than the oil lanterns that i was making 36 37, 38, 39, and 40. 41, 42, 43. Got to AFK a little bit. So um, I think woodcutting is just going to be the, the go-to thing. I do have that fletching goal right now, but it's just really kind of the best thing I can do AFK wise. Level 60 woodcutting, 61 woodcutting, 44 crafting, 45 crafting, 46 crafting, 47 crafting, 48 crafting, and there is level 49. I now can make the bullseye lantern lens, which is really good for me because this is going to be the best XP per hour that I can get with glass blowing up until I hit the crafting goal of level 87. A lantern lens is going to give me 55 XP. So in total, every molten glass we make is going to give us 75 XP. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much we're, we're capped out on the maximum XP per hour until we hit level 87 crafting so here's to like i don't know maybe like another 200 hours of uh walking back and forth from the charter ship to entrana and i'll see you guys on the other side 50 crafting 51 crafting 52 craft but i've been doing this before but while i mine waiting for random events um i might as well just um make these headless arrows while I walk back and forth from the mine just to kind of get some zero time fletching XP in. 55 fletching and there is level 56 fletching. All right before I end the night I decided to do a little bit of uh, selling the rest of these wines and willow crossbows but I decided um, it might be worth the little bit of extra time while selling to pick up iron bars while i do it since i'm already here so i go ahead and sell wine i go pick up an iron bar then world hop pick up the iron bar sell world hop sell pick up iron bar repeat the process so i'm getting smithing xp while selling and making gold so i think this will be worth the little bit extra time that it takes to go and pick up the uh, iron bars and smith them just because, you know, smithing XP is really hard to come by. So, and since I'm world hopping, I might as well uh, get the most out of each world hop that I do. All right, this is the last world hop. Um, I'm actually out of willow longbows to uh, sell. And not too many more Eclipse ones. Yeah, it's nice. You, uh, you get some smithing XP, you bank some fletching XP, and then you get your money as well, you know? It's pretty nice. Oh, and we end the night off with 52 smithing. I was not even expecting that. I can make a mithril mace, which doesn't matter because I got one from the ice 
giants already, but it is nice to know that I can just go ahead and make one as well. But yeah, the uh, the final cash stack right now is looking at 142,000 GP. That is absolutely amazing. And there is a level 57 fletching, level 58 fletching. And looky there, we got ourselves a genie random event. I'm going to put this right into hunter. And that should give me level 10 hunter. Level 53 crafting, 54 crafting. Now that I have the lantern lenses unlocked, which is my highest XP per hour that I can get until I hit 87 crafting, I can kind of see what my XP per hour is going to be like. And it looks like I'm getting about 21,000 XP an hour. I'm not being the most efficient, so it definitely could go up a little bit, but that's kind of where we're going to be sitting at for most of the time. 55 crafting, 56 crafting, and there is level 59 fletching, 57 crafting, level 60 fletching. Oh, that was actually a total level 900 too. Wow, we gaming. 58 crafting. I missed it, but there is a level 59 crafting as well. Doing a little bit of bank standing, but here is a level 61 fletching. 62 fletching. And there is level 71 mining. A level 60 crafting. All right, XP lamp, you know what that means? We're going to put it right into hunter. 100 hunter XP giving me level 11 hunter let's go 61 crafting 63 fletching and this is the last batch of iron arrow tips that i have to make into arrows and uh yeah if we go to the bank we have 60,000 iron arrows that's pretty awesome level 62 crafting all right spent all day on the phone watching football and i ended up getting to level 64 wood cutting um it's getting pretty late so i'm just gonna spend the rest of my night fletching these willow long bows i'm almost level 64 fletching right now so so pretty much just a level away from hitting the chunk goal of level 65 to be able to make those diamond bolt tips level 64 fletching level 63 crafting another clip of me getting an xp lamp you know what that means putting it right into hunter to give me level 12 hunter level 64 crafting would you look at that a book of knowledge gonna put that right into hunter as well and that's gonna give me level 13 hunter level 65 crafting and there is level 65 fletching i am now able to make a diamond bolt tip yeah, I got a few diamonds in the bank. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them all right now. And then we shall make a bolt tip as well. And there we go. Make diamond bolt tip complete. There is the chunk task done. I don't need to do any more fletching, but woodcutting is still probably my best AFK thing to do. So I'm probably still going to be woodcutting, but I think I'm just going to chunk all the logs into, uh, into the bank for now on. Another book of knowledge going straight into Hunter. And there is level 14 hunter, level 66 crafting, another XP lamp going straight into hunter, and that is level 15 hunter. So I was watching football all day and I decided that instead of wood cutting today, I was going to try out doing charter ships while on mobile and instead of blowing glass on the way back to the charter ship, I just deposited all the molten glass into the bank instead. So I'm just gonna sit here and bank stand all this molten glass that I have in the bank. Um, looks like I got about 2,500 in the bank at the moment. Just the lamp I was looking for. If I put this into Hunter, then that will give me a level 16 Hunter. And I'm officially one level away from level 17 Hunter, which unlocks Piro Piro. So the plan is I'm going to use one more lamp on Hunter and then proceed to start lamping agility to level 6. <laughs> uh, uh, man, we love that number. What's a video without, without level 69, am I right? 69 crafting. I don't know about you, but... Level 70 is usually the level where I start to think real gains have been made. But there is level 70 crafting. And uh, yep, yeah, that is the last lamp that we're going to be putting into Hunter. 145 XP until we hit level 17. 
I am not unlocking Puro Puro at the moment, and that is because I am waiting for certain scenarios to come before this happens. One of them being any PVM task that comes up that would require or highly benefit from having a form of prayer restoration. Moonlight Moss, a hunter creature in my chunks, when released from a jar, grants you prayer points. This will be vital since I don't have herb lore unlocked and will not be keeping any items from Piro, only using it as a training method to unlock my other hunter training methods. The second scenario would be unlocking the pyre foxes and sunlight antelope chunks, as these drop the meat to combine with the moonlight moss to make moonlight mixes, giving me a two dose prayer restoration instead of the one a regular moonlight moss jar would give me. I do have moonlight antelope in the hunter's guild basement already, but since they aren't available until level 91, the would be chunk task goal, I'd have to train well past the goal to have the mixes, not to mention the much lower catch rate of them compared to the pyro foxes slash sunlight antelope. But until one of those scenarios happen, we're going to be putting a pause on hunter training and putting the rest of my XP lamps into agility. Well, this is the first lamp that I'm going to put back into agility, and that is a level 4 agility. We like that. Level 71 crafting, level 72, level 73, 74 crafting, 75 crafting. Would you look at that? And there is a level 76 crafting. And that is a level 77 crafting. 78 crafting. I clicked the wrong charter ship, obviously. So um, there's a account ruined. Have to, I guess I have to start over. We went to Brimhaven instead of Sunset Coast. There we go. Was on mobile doing some wood cutting and I got myself two XP lamps. So if I put both of them into agility, this should give me level five agility. There we go. So I had uh, this person, Jadica, come and find me. And they were just so nice enough to give me a bond. So thank you, Jadica, for the bond. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, stay being awesome. Another day of watching football, and if you look here, I got three XP lamps, but uh, before we use them, I just want to say I got level 71 woodcutting, and our Willow log stack is actually getting pretty nice. I got myself almost 6,100 Willow logs now for whenever a fire making or another fletching task comes up. Also got myself about 700 Willow longbows to sell as well, but let's go ahead and use these lamps right on agility. I believe this should get me to level six and there we go level six i don't think it's enough to get me to level seven yet but level six gives me that run restoration upgrade that i was looking for so that is a freaking amazing now from level one to five your run restores to 100 percent in 12 minutes and 30 seconds but at level six that gets shortened to 11 minutes and seven seconds saving you almost a whole minute and a half to get your run all the way back to 100%. So in the short term, it doesn't look like it's going to give that much of a difference. But if you look at it in the long term, when you're doing something that requires you to walk or run a lot, this could actually save you hours upon hours. Okay, so before I went to bed, I wanted to try out an hour of some charter ship crafting with the new agility restoration level. And uh, it looks like I was able to get 23.9k an hour, which is actually a pretty decent improvement. Before I got this restoration improvement, my time to level to 87 was well over 100 hours, almost hitting 110. So it looks like just getting level six agility is going to save me over 10 hours of crafting which is honestly just very huge that is that is honestly wild this 23.9k was like pretty much max efficiency and beforehand i was getting like maybe 22.5k an hour so we're definitely getting a couple more trips in per hour which is honestly just gonna save so much time like the, who, who would have thought like just one little improvement in energy restoration would help out this much that is honestly wild 79 crafting and there is a level 80 crafting. I am officially halfway to level 87. So I, I just got to do exactly what I did one more time. Let's go. I forgot. That is total level 952. Level 80 and total level 950. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
was just AFK wood cutting. Got myself another XP lamp, putting that right into agility, and there is a level seven right there. I guess I should say that I ended up getting a wood cutting level as well. So level 73 wood cutting now. I want to take a small break from crafting and collect some eclipse reds that yes, they actually changed them from eclipse wines to eclipse reds and they changed the color of the bottle to red. That is a fact. But yeah, I'm gonna take some time and collect some more Eclipse Reds for some money making. Kind of want to take a little bit of break from crafting and uh, make some money. All right, that is all the Eclipse Reds I'm going to be collecting. It looks like I got 764 of them. So I'm going to match the five to one ratio with the longbows and make myself about 4,000 longbows. I think it's uh gonna be yeah i'm just gonna bank stand and make some longbows but as you can see i have about 8,000 willow logs so it shouldn't be a problem cutting half of them into longbows to to match that five to one ratio 66 fletching 67 fletching 68 fletching all right this is the last inventory of longbows that i gotta make i got 764 red wines and then also 3820 willow longbows still got about 5,000 willow logs in the bank and i will use that at my free will whenever i feel like i need to but for now they will just stay in the bank be up gonna go to sleep now and start the day off tomorrow with some world hop selling slash smithing so i will uh, see you guys in the morning good morning i am about to start this world hopping adventure but i also have these lantern lenses that i uh, had in the bank from all the molten glass that i ended up banking instead of blowing on the way back to the charter ships so i'm gonna go ahead and sell these five at a time too and they should run out before the willow longbows run out so but this world hopping ain't gonna do itself so i might as well get started i will see you on the other side starting off at about eighty thousand gp we'll see how much we end up getting didn't expect a smithing level but here we are a level 53 smithing and I just hit the world hop limit. I wasn't able to sell every single uh, wine, but I did end off making 526,000 gold and I still have about 200 Eclipse Reds to sell. So, uh, wow, I uh, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Oh man, this, this feels real good. This will definitely get me through the rest of this grind. All right, was editing a little bit and got myself a book of knowledge. I can put that right into, I almost fucked up, but can put that right into agility and get ourselves 105 agility experience, which puts us at level eight agility. Level 81 crafting, 82 crafting, 83 crafting. All right, I got myself an XP lamp. I was just, uh, AFK a little bit on the phone and uh, yeah, I got me an XP lamp. I can put this right into agility and that should give me level nine agility. 84 crafting. Got myself another lamp I can put into agility and that should give me level 10 agility. Would you look at that? All right, here we go. While we make a molten glass, that should be the level. Level 85 crafting, only two more to go. And so we are done with this chunk. I can now craft amethyst arrow tips and combine the accursed scepter. That's pretty cool. Here is a sexy screenshot of level 86 crafting because I forgot to record it. And here we go. Level 87 crafting. We are fucking done. After a month, almost a month in this chunk, I am actually done with it. Let's freaking go, ladies and gentlemen. I started this chunk with about 360 hours played and I'm now at 680 hours played. So I nearly doubled my playing time during the completion of this chunk. I am uh, so glad to be done and can't wait to see what is next. Back on Port Serum, let's go make this Dorgashin Light Orb right here. And there it is, Crafty Dorgashin Light Orb. Chunk task complete, and we are done with this chunk, and we can go ahead and roll a new one. All right, I got a new format for the chunk picker, so I've labeled every single rollable chunk, and I put it into a tier list. So C tier means free chunk. Anything above C tier is something that I would want, and anything below... A C tier is something that I don't necessarily want. I'm not going to go over any of the chunks, but just know that above C, good, below C, bad. 
But as you can see in Varamore, there is literally no chunks that would make me mad. I am happy with any chunk that I roll here. But if we go over to the mainland, you can see where some problems arise. There is uh, definitely a couple of chunks that I could roll that are not great for me. I got a, uh, I got a couple C tiers, a D tier, an F tier, and then if we go all the way down to pest control, that is also an F tier. And if we roll any of them, I will give you the reason why. This will decide my fate. Fuck. God damn it, bro. This is some complete ass cheeks, my dude. Oh my god. I will see you guys next year, okay? I will see you guys all next year. It was nice knowing you. Jesus Christ, this is where I'll be for a long, long time. I don't even know where to begin. 2026, more than likely. So if we calculate the new task after everything is done, unbacklogged, there we go. There is our there is our list of what we need to do. 100 combat, we're going to need to get 99 smithing. That's 99 smithing over 99 mining. That is right. 99 smithing is off of the backlog. There was three chunks I could have rolled that would have unbacklogged 99 smithing, but this chunk was by far the worst. Not only will I not have rings of forging, effectively doubling the amount of iron ore needed for 99, but this also means that one trip to the furnace is going to consist of four loading screens, two on my way to Entrana from pest control, and two more on my way back. Needless to say, this is going to take far longer to complete than the total time I have played on this account so far. This chunk gave me 19 tasks, but most of them have something to do with smithing, so I'm just going to condense all those tasks down to one graphic, 99 smithing. On screen, you can see the rest of the skill task, most notably 100 combat to access the veteran lander for pest control, 90 mining to mine a tier 9 shooting star. This has been backlogged for some time, but since 99 smithing pretty much guarantees I will have 99 mining, I might as well take it off the backlog. I also have an easy diary task to teleport to pest control using the minigame teleport, and since I have a teleport now, that means I have a way out of the Entrana dungeon. So I I can unbacklog the best in slot task of obtaining a rune full helm and adamant plate legs. The mithril kite shield is no longer a task since I'll have the smithing level to make an adamant kite shield in this chunk. The rest of the best in slot task will all be made through smithing giving me full adamant armor and weapons. This chunk is going to take well over 3,000 hours, but it's time to get one of the worst skills done and out of the way. Thank you again to SNHU for sponsoring the video, and don't forget to go to snhu.edu slash foley for more information. If you like the videos, make sure you are subscribed so you can see when I put out more content in the future. Thank you to all my channel members for supporting me even further. I can't thank you enough. My name is Foley, and I will see you all next time.